good. So we're doing the law yeah. of sines. And cosines or just the law of sines tonight? Um, I think, I don't know. These are our notes, and I wanted to review them because I struggle with this kind of stuff because I remember we had to do this my sophomore year, and I just had a really hard time with it. Okay. So I just printed off the notes to kind of okay. get a little bit more explanation. On okay. Um, do you have any specific problems to do, or you want me to come up with some? If you could come up with some, that's awesome, because he said he had problems online, and I was looking for them, and they weren't there, so I don't know if he took them down or something. All right. I can... Make some okay. here. Basically, the law of sines and the law of cosines. Are you covering that also tonight? The law of cosines. Yeah, where we're working on like all of the trig functions, okay. not like the cosecant, but just the sine okay, cosine. Okay, but it, we may or may not have time to get to the law of cosines. I don't see the law of cosines in these notes, only the law of sines. Um, okay, let's talk about the law of sines. In any triangle, let's say uh, 60, 70, 80. Okay. Hold it. You can't have a 60, 70, 80. You can, I meant 50, 60, 70, so that it totals 180. Mm -hmm. If I label that A, B, C, and then I label the sides as little c, little a, and little b, No matter the triangle, the ratio of the sine of an angle to its opposite side is the same, regardless of which one you choose. In other words, if I look at the first angle, sine of 60, and divide it by its opposite side, A, that ratio is going to be the same as the sine of 70 opposite its opposite side, B, and that ratio will be the same as the sine of 50 opposite C. Okay? So, the ratio is fixed, regardless of which angle you're looking at. If you take the sine of that angle, you get this from a calculator, pull that number off, and the ratio with its opposite side is the same. And I can do these in any order. I can also say A over the sine of 60 is equal to B over the sine of 70. Okay. So I can switch it up as long as I'm consistent. I can't say A over the sine of 60 being equal to the sine of 70 over B. In other words, you have to have one or the other in the numerator, the trig function or the side. Okay. okay. So, what this means is that if we are given three parts, three pieces of information of a triangle, we can solve it, no matter what. Okay. So, let's take an example. There's my three pieces of information. Mm -hmm. Side, side, angle. And if you remember from your geometry, you've got various combinations. You've got side, side, angle. You've got side, angle, side. You've got angle, side, angle. All of those different combinations. So you see why this first one is side, side, angle? 
Yeah. In other words, you just start in one direction and you follow what you have. I've got a side there, I've got a side there, then I have an angle. If, mm -hmm. if this was the side that was 10, well then that wouldn't be side, side, angle, that would be side, angle, side. Right. Okay. But in order to use the law of signs, we have to have one relationship, at least one, where we have the angle and we know its opposite side. Now that's going to allow us to solve this triangle. Because I can say that the sine of 70 degrees divided by 10 is equal to the sine of angle C, whatever that is, divided by 8. Okay. There's only one unknown. There's only one unknown. C. In other words, this is the right. number. This is the number. So I can figure out what the sine of C is. Do you have a calculator handy? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, why don't you pull it out and let's get some of these numbers here. So we need to multiply this by 8, right? Okay, so sine of 10, sine versus sine of 70 divided by 10 multiplied by sine? By 8. By 8. Oh, by 8. Multiplied by... Okay. What do you get? What do you get? Oops. I hate when I do that. I accidentally press the clear button instead of the enter button. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Do, okay, do you use the TI-84? Yeah. This one, this, one right here? this one right here? Can you, can you see this yeah. on my screen? On my screen? Yeah. Okay. I just found this recently. I just found though, if ever you have a calculator, have a calculator I might be able to help you. I might be able to help you. Merely because I can break it. Cool. Uh, but you need to know how to do it. Did you come up with a number for, for sine C? Um, it says 8, but I don't think that's right. No. Because I... Let me do it. No. So it's sine of 70. Ah, notice, wow. if you check your mode, check your are you in degree or radian? Degree or radian? I'm in degree. Okay. okay. So, so, the sine of 70, sine of 70 end paren, end paren, multiplied by 8, multiply divided, by 8 by 10, divided by 10, equals point, equals point, 7. Okay. Okay. Now, okay. that's critical because, first of all, signs have to fall within one or minus one in that range. In that range. So if you ever come up with an answer that the sign of C is equal to one point one, that's impossible. That's impossible. Okay. So understand that. So understand that's that. critical to use the law of signs. Because occasionally, signs. occasionally they'll give you that's, that's, the, that's an impossible time. And, and the way you discover it is by using the law of signs, calculating it through, and you end up with something like that. Well, that's impossible, so you're dealing with an impossible time. So, I was a little suspicious I was a little your first answer was eight point. Yeah, I see what I did. I typed in, so I first did like sine 70 divided by 10 and then got like press enter and got that answer. Okay. And then I wanted to multiply it, so I only did, I'm used to using the parentheses and not the little okay. multiply sign, so that's why. Is that okay. right? <laughs> so, so we that's still need that. to solve for the angle C. So how do we do that? Um, In other words, our goal here is to solve for all three angles and all three sides. 
all three sides. Right. Okay. So if the sine of C is equal to 0 0.751, what is C? What is C? How do you get C? How do you get C? Remember, C is the angle. C is the angle. Take the inverse sine of 0 0.751. You can probably take the inverse sine and the answer, and you'll get it exactly. But we don't need it. We don't need it. Okay, so inverse sine of 7 uh, point, no, point, or, no, or point 7, 5, 7, 5, 1. Whatever this answer was, that's what you want to take the inverse sine of. 48.67. Okay, I'm going to round it off to 49. Okay. Just for our purposes, for our purposes. Makes it easier to understand these and round them off. Round such complicated, such complicated. All right, so now we right. have so two angles, angles and two, two sides, angles, right? Two sides, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we can immediately get the third angle. We'll get the third, third angle. angle. What's angle B? What's angle B? Um, okay, so 70 plus. That would be 119 minus 180 minus 119. Okay, that's 61. Okay. 61. 61. Yeah. I thought you said 51. No. I was like, oh. I'll tell you what, if there's one skill you want to be good at in geometry, it's subtracting numbers from 180. From 180. Right. Because that's just something. Because that's just something. Okay. So now okay. the only side you're missing is side B. How do we get right. side B? Um. Do you want to uh, set up an equation using the law? Right. Okay. Um, sine of 61 divided by um, B. Because we don't, we don't oh, know okay. what that is yet. Um, Equals what? B equals sine of uh, the 10? No, or no. take no. signs of angles. Always remember to distinguish between whether you're talking about an angle or a side line. You take trig you take of angles, angles to the number. Angle. Numbers. You take inverse, you take inverse, inverse of numbers of numbers to get angle. To get angle. Oh, okay, that makes more okay. sense. So, so we need so we need a relationship. We, need a relationship. we got two choices. We got two choices. Um, seventy. Okay. What's its opposite side? Opposite side. Uh, ten. Okay. That's going to allow us to solve for B. Okay. Now, let's back up for a moment. Well, now, let me show you why. This, uh, in order to solve for B here, the next step mm -hmm. is cross-multiply, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would have B times equals 10 times sine of 61. And I would divide both sides by sine of 70, of 70, so I would get B equals 10 sine of 61 divided by sine of 70. You with me? You with me? Okay. That's very doable. That gives us a number and gives us our answer. But let me suggest but something to you that I just just to a previous student who had the same problem. When you get to this point where where you have to solve for B, that's the last thing to solve for. It's easier if I write the equation this way. B divided by the sine of 61. One. Equal equal ten divided ten by divided by seventy. Okay. okay. 
The reason this is better is because this only requires one step. I don't have to prosecute them. Because what I'm looking for is in the numerator, it's all I have to do is multiply both sides by sine of 61. So I get B equals 10 sine of 61 divided by sine of 70, which I got the other way else, but it took me two steps. Okay. okay. Because you can flip these relationships around, you don't always need the trig function on top and the side length on the bottom. You can do it this way, as long as you're consistent. Then the way I like to solve these problems is by figuring out what you're looking to solve. In this case, we were looking to solve for B. I immediately started with B in the numerator on the left. Okay. 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 You you'll understand after we do a, another one or two. I'm not going to waste our time by figuring out this. Just I know you know how to get this number. Okay. Well, no. Go ahead and get this one time, and just for there's a good reason. Okay. It is B equal to. Mm -hmm. I got nine point. Okay. Now, now, every time you solve a triangle, you want to give it the ballpark test. The ballpark okay. test being, is the largest side opposite the largest angle? Is the smallest side opposite the smallest angle? Because every triangle has to be that way. If you don't have those relationships, it'll, it means you've made a mistake with your calculations and it gives you a chance to go back and fix it. Eight is the smallest okay. side, it's opposite the smallest angle. Ten is the biggest side, it's opposite the biggest angle. So this answer of 9.3 makes a lot of sense. It's right in the middle, should be. Okay. Now, Perfect. yeah, that, that's the easy situation, okay? There was nothing difficult about that. There was no strange things going on. It was a possible triangle, and it was a unique triangle. The moment I gave you the conditions, the initial conditions, which were this, just those three pieces of information, there's right. only one triangle that's going to result from that. The difficult part of the law of signs is the ambiguous case. You dealt with that? Mm, not that I can remember. Well, you probably have. Just because I don't know how they can avoid it. They can avoid it. Um, um, it sounds familiar, but at the same time, not. Well, I don't actually see it on here, but it's not that hard to think about, so let's go through one. Here's one that is the ambiguous. Okay. Let's solve this triangle. So using what we just learned, we have an angle. We have an angle. We have its opposite side. We have, side. Mm -hmm. we have one relation. One relation. And we have another side. And we have another side. Which means we can solve right. this we angle. This angle. Once we solve this angle, we will be able to calculate it. We'll be able to calculate it. And then we'll, we'll be able to solve the we'll side B. Okay? okay? So that's the plan. So that's the plan. So get me started. So get me started. So you want to do... What do we solve? What do we solve? What's the first thing we're going to solve? What's the first thing we're going to solve? Angle C. Okay, let's write it on okay, top, write left. It on top left. Okay. What goes under that? What goes under that? Sine C over 10. Okay. okay. Equals yeah. what? Equals what? Over 10 equals sine 40. 
over 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 eight. Okay. Next step. Next step. And then cross multiply. Don't need to. Don't remember, need we're trying to solve for that. So all we need to do is multiply so both sides by ten. Oh. Okay. So it's nine p is equal to ten times nine forty divided by divided by. Come up with a number. Come up with a number. And divided by eight, and I got. I think I need another new calculator. I keep breaking them <laughs> somehow. Let me show you how I would do that on my. Okay, I'm gonna hit N. Whoops, got Carmine on. Got Carmine on. I'm gonna say ten. I'm gonna say ten times times the sign. It puts the parentheses in there for you. So it's all for you. It puts forty in parentheses divided by eight. By eight. That gives me. That's the sign of the sign. Okay. I'm looking to solve for I'm looking to solve get an inverse sign. Well, I got to take the inverse sign of that answer. So if I do second sign, enter, enter. I guess I have to put in that answer. <laughs> I thought it would do it I quickly, it. but I'll just go ahead and put I'll it just go ahead and put it in that now. So that's the angle. So that's the angle. Angle C is angle three degrees. So C is fifty three degrees. All right. All right. Not exactly. Not exactly. When I drew this triangle, there's actually there's a triangle drawn that fit this condition. There's a 40 degree angle there. That side is 10. That side is 10. This side is 8. This side is 8. That's why it's called an ambiguous triangle. Because because Given side side angle, there are potentially two possible triangles that fit those first three conditions. Now, how do I figure out whether or not this is a possible triangle? Well, I get my angle C and I find also the supplementary angle. What is the supplementary mm -hmm. angle to C or to 53 degrees? Uh. Like, what would the top one have to be? No. Supplementary means uh, they add to 180. 87? It would be 117, or 127, excuse me. Notice that 53 and 127 add to 180. Right. Okay. Why do I figure this one out? Because... Is it possible to put a 127 degree angle into there? And the answer is yes. Oh, it is. Yeah, because I've got I've got a 40 degree. 127 would only add to 167. That leaves 13 I could put into there. So I have two answers. One is this one, where that side's 53 which makes 93, which leaves uh, 87 for that side. And the other one is where angle C is 127 degrees. Okay. Both of these triangles are legit, and they both have the both first three conditions three that conditions. you were given. That you have an angle of 40 you degrees, angle you have a side of 10, a side of 8. Side of eight. So, the way, so you determine the way you determine whether or not you have an ambiguous case, case is by always is figuring, by out figuring out what the supplementary angle is. Angle and seeing if, if it's possible 
to have that angle. And the way you see that is by adding that is the only known only to have, which is 40 degrees. So if this supplementary angle added to the only angle you know is less than 180, then we do have two triangles. Two triangles. Okay. Okay. If it added to this angle and this more than 180, then we cross it out and we cross it. We don't have this triangle. We don't have this triangle. We only have this triangle here. Okay. okay. You don't okay. know when your first you start. When your first start. Especially if this Especially angle is less than nine. Less if than this nine. angle is greater than this angle is greater than you cannot have you cannot have this case. And you don't have to worry about. It. Don't have to worry. But if this angle but is less than ninety, you potentially have the ambiguous case. So you have to. So you have to figure out. To this is the easiest way to do it. There's a lot of there's a lot of teach you that oh don't have you memorized necessary necessary for you to have a ambiguous triangle case. And to me that seems a little silly. A little hard to memorize those four things. It's much easier to do it this way. But this way where when up with this first angle, figure out the supplementary angle also, and see if that works. Now, the reason this is possible, you might say, well, how does this not violate the law of sine? Because we've got the sine of 40 over 8 has to be the same as the sine of 127 over 10, which has to be the same as the sine of 53 over 10. Well, okay. the sine of 53 is the same as the sine of 127. This is the second quadrant angle. This is the first quadrant angle. So it doesn't violate the law of sines at all. All right. So, since we have determined that there are two different triangles, we have to solve both of them. Okay. And we've got all three angles. Mm -hmm. We've got two of the sides. The only side that needs solving is side B and side B up there. Right. So, if we're solving for B, let's do number 1B. The number one B B get give me the rest of it. Number one B would be <laughs> B over eighty seven. Over the sine, the sine of eighty seven. Sine of eighty seven, okay. Equal right. Equals uh, would equal a rule of ten over sine of uh, 53. Okay. So this B is equal to 10 times the sine of 87 divided by the sine of 53. Let's go over to the second triangle. That mm -hmm. B. Let's solve for that B. Because it's different. You can see it's shorter. Right. Give me one second. I'm just writing the last bit of that down. Okay, so the second one would be B over uh, 13? Sine of 13. Sine of 13. Don't, rem don't forget, it's the law of sines. Right. You've got to have a sine in every part of each equation. Equals what? 10 over 100, or sine of 127. Yeah, which happens to be the same as that, 10 over sine of 53. Sine of 53 is the same number as the sine of 127. But nonetheless, we come up with a B of 10 sine of 13 divided by sine of 127. 
and you've solved both triangles now. Okay. So mm -hmm. this is the only hard part of the law of sines. Right. There's one other hard part. And let me give you an example of that. In other words, if you can figure out how the law of sines works in the ambiguous case, you got the mm -hmm. law of sines figured out. There's one other case that you have to be careful of. Okay. Again, we have side side angle. Okay. Okay. So potentially it's an ambiguous case of the law of sines. So let's begin. What's the first thing we want to solve for? Um, angle C. Okay, so what's the first thing I'm on? What should I write? Um, sine of 80. No. Remember I want to solve for C. Let's put it in the top left. Okay, so sine of C. Okay. Over 14. Uh -huh equals sine of 80 over 8. Okay, so the sine of C equals 14 <coughs> sine 80 over 8. Come up with a number. Okay. Sine 80 divided by 8. I got 1.7 and then you need to take the... Hold on. And One moment. It's impossible for the sine of C to be equal to a number bigger than 1. If you tried to take the inverse sine of that, it's going to cough on you. It's going to say error. Uh. Remember what the sine curve looks like. The sine curve looks like this. Never goes above 1, never goes below negative 1. So when we come up with an answer that the sine of C is equal to 1.7, a number bigger than 1, it tells us immediately that this can't be a triangle. There's no way you okay. can make a triangle out of those three starting dimensions. That's the only okay. other hard part of the law of sines, is when you go to solve for an angle, and you come up with a trig fun a sign of the angle is some number bigger than one, it means that you don't have a triangle. And let's examine this triangle, why this can't be a triangle. Well, it's pretty clear. I've got eight opposite the 80 degree angle, and yet I got this huge number 14 opposite this angle here, which can't be a whole lot bigger than 80. This angle can be 99 degrees maximum, and that was that's if that can be 1. And okay. this, there's no way that that side would be that big. In other words, always remember that the biggest angle has to have the biggest side opposite. The smallest angle has to have the smallest side opposite. I made this side so big that I knew that it wouldn't be possible. And okay. a lot of times they won't do that. They'll maybe make it uh, 9, okay, instead of 14. Mm -hmm. Now, is that a possible triangle? Well, I'm not sure. I'd have to go through and try to solve it. And hopefully when I get down to solving for C, I get sine of C, it'll be some number less than 1. In which case, then I take the inverse to get what the angle is, and I proceed and the rest of it is easy. The law of sines, for the most part, is really quite easy, except for two possible situations. And that is when it's an impossible triangle, 
and your sine of the angle comes out to be a number greater than 1, or when it's an ambiguous triangle, where there's two possible triangles. And then you have to use that technique that I showed you and figure out both triangles. Every other situation for the law of sines is a piece of cake. All right. Okay. I'll use the operations. Now, let's do some for practice. Right. I'm going to give you an angle and sides. So angle A, we'll call 50 degrees. Side A, so I have an opposite side to angle A. We'll make 10, and we'll give you a side C of 12. Okay. So let's solve this triangle. Okie dokie. So that would be... There's three things we need. What's the first thing we can get? Um, this is side C, not angle C. In other words, our triangle is A, B, C, and this is side C is 12, side A is 10, and angle A is 50. Yeah, that's, that's just what I was feeling. Okay. And, only, okay. only let's, let's, let's not make it hard. Let's make it a little easier to make that 70. Okay. Alrighty, so we want to find the angle C, so we're going to put sine of C over 12 equals sine of 70 over 10. And then it would be 12 times the sine of 70 divided by 10 and it'd be, I got 1.1 which can Impossible triangle. Let's okay. change this to 60 degrees. Right. I made this up off the top of my head. I didn't really want an impossible triangle. <laughs> All right, so we're changing it to 60. Yeah, everything else is the same, except that angle is 60. Sine of 60 divided by 10, 1.03. Let's make it 50. Okay. Sorry. 12. You're fine. It's good practice. Yeah, uh, you'll maybe see. Uh, it is good practice, actually, yeah. Um, yeah, I got point nine one. Okay, cool. Nine. <laughs> so point nine two. Okay. Now what? Um, okay. In other words, we, we now know that we have at least one triangle. Right. And maybe two. We're not sure yet whether we can have two yet. So you do... You take the inverse sine of that. Which gives you? Which gives you, let's see, point, uh, 66.92. We'll call it 67. What's the okay. next step? You add them together. No, we need to find the second quadrant answer. In other words, 67 degrees was the acute angle that is true. But there's also an obtuse angle where the sine of C is, the sine of that obtuse angle is also equal to 0.92. What's the supplementary angle to 67 degrees? Um, that would be, oh. Oh, I know this. <laughs> 180 subtracted by okay. that. Uh, that'd be... Um, um, <laughs> I need to get better at my subtraction. 
113. That would be 113. Okay. Now, is that a possible angle in that triangle? Yes. Yeah, because if I add 113 to 50, I don't reach the 180 limit. That's only 163. That allows for a third angle. In other words, there's another way to draw this triangle. Like this. Where this is still 50. This is still 12. This is still 10. Only in one case, that's 67 degrees. And in the other case, it's 113 degrees. You with me? Okay. If, yeah. I'm just if, I would have, well. if I would have added that 113 to, to whatever that angle is and got greater than 180, then this is not a possible solution. And I would okay. have only had one triangle, the one that is at the top. And I proceed and solve that. But since the 113 plus 50 allows for this triangle here, what's that tiny angle up there now? This adds to 163, yeah. that's 17 degrees. Okay? Okay. Now we got to solve for both triangles. Let me erase some stuff here. Triangle number one. What do we need to solve for? Well, what can we solve uh, for right off the get-go? We can solve for sine. Well, we can solve for angle B. Angle B. Because we don't need the law of sines to solve for angle B. All right. we need to know is the sum of the angles is 180. Oh, no, this right. is 117. This has to be 63 degrees. Right. Okay. We've already got the third angle in this triangle down here. So now we have three angles and two sides in both triangles. Is all we have to do is solve for side B. In triangle one, what should I write? Um, you should write sine of... Or take what you're going to solve for and always put it on the top left. That'll make your math easier. Okay, so B... Right? Yeah, B over sine of 63 equals... Um, you can choose any of the other two relationships. It does not matter which. They give you the same ratio. Okay. So I could do sine over... No, you got to leave it in the same order. I mean, I meant 10. You got it. In other words, I once 10. I choose to put the sine in the denominator, I've got to leave it in the denominator. Right, so then you could do 10 over sine of 50. Okay. So B, if I multiply both sides by sine of 63, B is equal to that. Okay? Okay. Triangle number 2, B. Um, that would be... Little B. Little B. Um, okay, so it'd be B over the sine of 17 equals, we can do 10 again, 10 over sine of 50. Yeah, you can use that. These all have to be the same. Even though it's two different triangles, these ratios are all the same. That's why it's ambiguous because they are the same. In other words, 12 over the sine of 67 is the same as 12 over the sine of 113, because the sine of 113 is the same number as the sine of 67. So now this B is 10 times the sine of 17. So that's big B. That's a little b. Do you want the answer or? 
Not really. I just made these up, so the answer is not going to mean much. I mean, it's not like you have to turn it in, right? Right. Okay. Um, well, let me let me think of one. Uh, I, I did see some other notes there that maybe we should talk about. Uh, it looks like I don't see law of cosines. Let me let me take a look at your notes here. Hold on. Um, he said the last class don't do the area yet because we're not doing that this following class. We're doing it the next class after. Okay. So next. Okay. Let's do this example right here. Only let me write it. Don't don't be looking at the note. I want you to do it from scratch without the notes. I'm just using it because I I think this might be helpful to do this. Okay. Minimize that. Okay. What's the first thing we can solve for? Um, the first thing we can solve for is angle C. Okay. So what do I want to write? Um, you want to write um, sine of 32. No. No, you want to write. And you could do it that way. I, I, what I'd like to see, though, is you develop a methodology where you figure out what the first thing we're going to solve for. Sine of C. Well, we're trying to solve for C, which means sine of C is the best thing we have at the moment. Right. Now, let's start that on the upper left part of this equation. What's that divided by? Uh, that would be sine, no, oh, 19, okay. isn't it? Equals what? Equals sine of 32 divided by 12. Okay. The only reason I want you to write it this way as opposed to starting with that, which is what you were going to do, is that when you start with this, you don't always end it with the right order. Sometimes you end up with the unknown and the denominator. And then it just makes your arithmetic harder, one extra step. Okay? By starting with what you want to solve for in the upper left, you're guaranteed that that's going to be in the numerator. Okay. okay. So, what next? Um, and then you do 19 times the sine of 32 divided by 12. Okay, equals sine of C. Okay. That number. And then you get, so for that you get 0.839 or 0.84. Okay, next step. And then you, then you take the inverse sign of okay, it. Okay, what do you get? And then I got 57.03. Okay, 57 degrees. What's the next step? Um, you you can add 32 to plus 57 no, to get. No, no, no. Uh, oh, you subtract 18 or subtract 57. You find the supplementary angle to 57. That's the way to think of it. Is you're looking for the second quadrant angle, the the sine of both of these angles give you the same number. So what is the supplementary angle to 57? 123. Okay. Now, what? Now you add 32. Yeah. In other words, you want to find out if 123 is possible. And it is. When I add 123 to 32, that's less than 180. That gives me 155. I got room for a 25 degree third angle. Right. So both of these triangles are possible. You do have the ambiguous case. 
Now, okay. interestingly enough, do they state that here? Let me see. Doesn't look like it. No, they don't. I can't believe they used an ambiguous triangle and they don't tell you that there's another solution for this. Well, that almost leads me to believe that you're not going to study the ambiguous case, but it's hard to imagine you wouldn't. Um, hmm. Since they don't do the second ambiguous, I'm going to leave it off right here to finish this problem. Okay. okay. So we'll assume there's only one triangle as a solution. So what now? Okay. In other words, that's 57 degrees. What's the next step? Right. The, you find the third angle, which is 89. Okay. You add them together. All three of those add to 180, do they? Ah, uh, no. Hold yeah. on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did I add wrong? Well, you can't add these. The sum of these two does not equal this. The sum of all three angles equals 180. 180 minus one, so yeah, 180 minus 89. Which is 91. So this angle is 91. Okay. Okay. Now what? Now we got three angles so, and two sides. We what's the last thing we need to solve for? Um, we need to solve for side what side A? The side names mm -hmm. always have the same letter as the angles. We use capital letters for angles, small letters for the opposite. Side. Okay, so that one would be B, a small. Uh huh. Okay. So how do I so solve B, for it? You do B over sine of 91 okay. equals um, equals uh, what's it called? The the other one other side, which is you could do 12 over the sine of 32. That's what I would do, merely because 12 is a smaller number than 19. So. I always use the smallest numbers I can use. So now B becomes 12 times the sine of 91 divided by the sine of 32. And that number is? Divided by sine of 32. And I got 22.64. Which is side B. Yeah, they work through this entire problem, and they don't show you the other triangle that's possible. <laughs> and yet, it's definitely possible. This is side-side angle. I don't know. <laughs> it's possible that they may get you through the entire law of signs without doing it, but I'd be amazed. Uh, it's definitely the toughest part, as you can see. Although it's not so tough if you do it the way we do it. Right. If, if you always figure out that supplementary angle and then figure out whether it's possible or not, that's, a, that's the only extra step that you have to right. take. Uh, they didn't take that step here. Notice that they came up with the angle C of 57. They did not come up with the other uh, supplementary angle. Right. They should have if, if they were doing a full analysis of this. Uh, this, in fact, would be a perfect example of the ambiguous case of the law of signs. Okay. All right. Let me, let's have a look at your other page. Does it have anything on it we want to look at? The only thing that what basically what we're doing next class is um, area, the area one. Okay. So this top half here, this example, looks like they gave you angle, angle, and one side. Those, those are really easy because you can immediately get the third angle. So now you have four right. pieces of information. 
And then you just figure out the sides like we were Yeah. Doing. In other words, as long as you have a pair. In other words, we've got an angle of 25 degrees there, and we have the side 15 that's opposite that angle. As long as yeah. you can figure out which side is opposite which angle, then these are all pretty easy. Um, there's nothing to these. Yeah, that actually, what we did today helps me out so much because I remember sophomore year, I zoned it all out. Well, you know, so. probably because that ambiguous case. There's nothing hard about the law of signs. If, if there wasn't such a thing as the ambiguous case, it would be really easy. And that's yeah. maybe why they're doing it this way, is they don't want to confuse you by introducing the ambiguous case. <clears throat> and that's possible. Um, but I would think they would tell you about it at some point. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, is there any questions you have about any of this? Not so far. I think I'm doing okay with signs. And then I'm pretty sure over the, like, the course of the next few weeks or whatnot, like, It'll tie everything together with like cosines and Again, all that. Look at this page here. He indicates you should cross multiply mm -hmm. when you shouldn't. Notice that is all you have to do is multiply both sides by the sine of 107. Mm -hmm. And you have your answer. Cross multiplying merely requires you to do one additional step. Right. So. Just because, just because you can cross multiply doesn't always mean you should. It's not the right. fastest. It, it adds an extra step when you do it here. Right. In other words, you can get directly from this step to this second bottom step here with one step by just multiplying both sides by sine of 107. And then you get C. And then once you get C, you can figure out A. All right. The, well, let me just add one thing that will be helpful to you. The law of sines has to be used on every single triangle that you solve. However, sometimes you're going to get this. Three pieces of information that determine precisely one triangle, but notice I do not have an opposite side to the only angle that I know. I cannot use the law of sines to solve that triangle, but I can use the law of cosines. Whenever you have this situation, you use the law of cosines. The other situation where you always use the law of cosines is when you have all three sides and no angles. Okay. Notice that neither of these would lend itself to the law of sines. You have to use the law of sines, but only after you figure out one other angle. Right. Once you figure out one additional angle in both of these cases here, then you use the law of sines to finish solving the triangle. But whenever you see three sides alone, that's the law of cosines, which we won't go into. But let's start it with the law of cosines. Or whenever you see that you do not have one relationship, You've, you need that one ratio. I know 50 degrees, but I don't know the side opposite 50. And I know two other sides, but I don't know the angles opposite those sides. So. Okay. These two situations, you have to use the law of cosines combined with okay. the law of sines. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, and we're going to leave Wednesday at 6 as your regular? Yeah, that works best for me just because Monday sometimes, as we've noticed, I don't have any Yeah, no, me. that's fine. If it works best for you, that's the best time to do it. I've got you down for every Wednesday at 6. Just All right, if you don't need a session, try to give me as much notice as you can just because Wednesday is a fairly busy night for me. Okay. All right, Taryn, I will talk to you next time. All right, thank you so much. Bye.